Well, howdy folks. Welcome to another episode of Adventure in Art. My name is Ben Staley, your resident talking head. This little chapter is all about flash photography and the Leica Q2. Welcome to my living room. This is my new studio. This is where I'm recording my little YouTube videos. I kind of like it. I just kick back on the couch. We have a conversation. It's pretty chill. I got nice, lots of nice uh, sunlight or natural light coming in from the patio through the, through the window over here. And I don't have to do a lot. I can sit here. It still looks okay, right? And we have a conversation. So. Yes, I am primarily a portrait photographer. That's what I feel most confident doing, shooting people. I love to work with people, all shapes and sizes, all ethnicities, all backgrounds. Love to do documentary style portraiture. I travel a lot for work and uh, I love just meeting people, everyday people and photographing them. Uh, I also live in Los Angeles and there's a fair amount of uh, what I call beautiful people. And so I photographed the beautiful people a lot too. I would say the last year and a half, shoot, how long? Mostly since I got the Q2, I've been using strobes a lot for the portraiture and experimenting with it. And I've learned a lot. And I'm, I'm in this weird place where um, I, I love shooting natural light and I pride myself in my ability to see the light and to find the good spots where to put the subject, where to put the camera, how to compose, how to use the light in the best way. It's it's a real skill. Uh, I've been doing it for years. I'm, I'm confident with the natural light and, and how to do it. But I've been experimenting more and more with flash photography and uh, I've learned quite a bit. I'm all self-taught. I'm a self-taught photographer. Uh, I'm a cinematographer by trade, and so I'm using lights all the time to light people, to light rooms, to light things. I do a lot of documentary work. I do uh, some commercial work. I do, I've do. i shot some features, a lot of short films, uh, music videos, things like that. So I'm pretty comfortable using artificial lighting or constructing the lighting. I'm comfortable with that as well. Not as comfortable using strobes and uh, flashes and things like that and the different modifiers. It's just, a, it's a little more technical, it's a little more complicated, and it's a little, for me, someone who's been lighting things for decades at this point, because I'm freaking old, uh, a little intimidating and I just uh, started diving in and teaching myself things and I'm just going to share the most basic stuff that I've learned. You don't need to know a lot. Uh, I'm going to tell you a couple things and you're going to be off to the races. So that's what this is about. I'm already being more long-winded than I had planned. Let's get into this. <laughs> Why is this little guy, the Leica Q2, good for strobe photography, flash photography? Uh, right off the bat, the cool thing about this camera is it's got a leaf shutter. You can sync your flash at a much higher shutter speed than you can with a traditional style shutter. Uh, I routinely use a shutter speed of a one one thousandth of a second and it works just fine. Here's the rub with the Leica Q2. Unless you're using a Leica branded flash, which would be like an on-camera, they make several on-camera uh, flashes that you can use. I think they're pretty expensive because they're Leica. 
unless you're using a Leica branded flash, you have to shoot everything in manual, which I'm actually totally cool with because I'm shooting manual all the time anyways, and then you just add a light in. Is that complicated that you are not, it's not getting an automatic exposure through the lens and you have to do it all manually? It's not complicated. I prefer to work that way. I want to fine tune the exposure myself. I don't want to just trust the flash to uh, meter through the camera and set the correct power. So I like that. Maybe you don't like that. Well, unless you get an on-camera like a flash, that's what you're going to have to do. Here's what I use. Now, before I had the Q2, I had a Nikon DSLR, a pro level DSLR that I was doing all my shooting with. I had a couple jobs where I had to shoot for some brands and I thought I better get some lighting. I can't just trust natural lighting for these jobs. And so I went out and I bought this guy. Now this is a flash point. What is it? An Explorer R2. This is Flashpoint is the same company as Godox. They just, I think they're made in the same factory. They pump them out either as a Flashpoint or as a Godox. Uh, so I bought this uh, in I think 2000, maybe five years ago or six years ago. And it came with this little R2, it's kind of like R2-D2, like some Star Wars shit. It's an R2 uh, transmitter that goes in the hot shoe communicates to this guy. The cool thing is this Nikon transmitter will work perfectly with Leica. So I can just put it right in here. Bada bing, bada boom. And it works just fine in manual mode. Again, I can't do TTL. It won't do automatic exposure through the lens. It doesn't take a reading from the camera or anything but I can, control the, I can control the flash. Let me show you this. Let me take this guy off. I can control the flash with the transmitter on the camera. Boom. If you see here, got the transmitter on the camera, I'm pushing the little button up here. Oh, I don't have it on. That's not gonna work. I'm not very good at this tutorial stuff. Here we go. Boom, whoa, I'm blind. Oh, you're blind too. Anyways, it's that simple. Let's turn this off. Enough of that, enough of the demonstrations. So, Okay, what have we learned? What have we learned? Let's stay on track. Uh, we can use a Nikon transmitter and it'll talk to the flash. I also have this guy, which is a Godox. Again, same company. Uh, where's the name? There it is. It's a V1. Again, same. I got this for a different job, by the way, and where I wanted something small and portable that I could travel with. Same company, Godox, same company as Flashpoint, like I just said. it also works with this transmitter. That's pretty cool. So they technically have different brand names on them, but they're the same company and so they work. So I can look, I'll push the little button here. Boom, boom, whoa, I'm blind. Boom, pretty cool, right? I can even turn on my Q2. Let's see if it'll work right off the bat. Let's see if it'll go. <laughs> Q2 fired that flash, pretty cool. It's that easy. Then what do you do? You go into the little, the little menu here and you just push the button and you just dial your exposure up and down. So I set the exposure in the camera. Oh, I'm a one one thousandth of a second. I wanna be a F5.6 and then I just boop, 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 dial whatever power I want in the flash here. Usually I'm pretty low power. This thing is freaking bright. Boom. And uh, that's all there is to it, folks. It's, it's, it's that simple.
gotta let my dog in. The dog just wants to come in from the patio. Okay, it's really that simple. Uh, find a trigger that works, find a flash it'll talk to, set it up, dial in your exposure, you're good to go. Now, there is one little thing that is gonna help you. Now my dog is drinking over there, making lots of noise. Um, there's one thing that's gonna help you uh, that I didn't learn this right away. I had to sort of figure this out myself. If you just put it, plug in a flash, and, and you have the transmitter in the hot shoe and you're getting ready to shoot, your exposure preview, your image that you're seeing on your LCD is gonna be blinking, dark and bright and dark and bright. It does that unless you go into the menu and you go to page one, two, it's on page two at the very bottom and it's called exposure preview. And it'll say PASM or you switch it to PAS. So because I have I shoot in manual, it will not give me a preview of the image if the camera is in manual mode. So you need to have your exposure preview on page two in EAS setting, which means it will not preview your manual exposure. Again, always shooting manual. So let's talk that, that that's something in the menu that's really going to help you or you're going to get this blinky thing. And for like, I would say, close to a year, I shot all of my uh, flash people with when I was using a flash and it was always doing the blinky thing and it was really distracting. I still managed to get some good images, but once I dove into the menu and actually bothered to try and figure that out, it was a lot freaking easier. The Q2 has really great autofocus. It's not a sports camera. It's not like super fast and super snappy. And a lot of times when I'm shooting with a strobe, I'm in my studio, my studio, most of you that watch the channel know what my studio is. It's pretty dark down there in my studio. And so a lot of times the camera struggles to find that, uh, to lock focus uh, in low light. So what I typically have been doing is I manual focus. I'm manual exposing and I'm manual focusing. So I keep the ISO as low as possible. Usually I'm 100, 200. And then I set my iris around five, six usually. That gives me a little wider depth of field. And then I just go to manual focus. I focus in and I set it there. And I'm not moving around a lot. I've usually got like a model or a subject in front of me eight or 10 feet, and I'll just focus on them right on their eye level, um, set my shutter where I think I wanna be, and then just fire away all in manual. That way there's no hesitation from the camera. Once I press the shutter, it's not hunting, trying to find focus. It's just instantly, boom, instantly firing shots, and I can boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Okay, modifiers, light modifiers. This, that's, a, that's a subject for many other videos and I'm never gonna do those videos. What am I using for modifiers? Sometimes I'll use this thing bare. I've done a variety of things. What I've been using for the last year a lot is a seven foot umbrella with a big diffuser panel over it and I just kind of stick it up high at an angle or directly above my subject kind of where the umbrella curves down, I put the subject right under it. Okay, look, maybe those aren't the kind of images you wanna make, but maybe you still wanna use uh, flash with your Q2. Here's the deal. It's all pretty simple, experiment. Maybe you don't have the exact same gear that I have. Maybe you don't want that exact same gear. Get whatever you want. Get a much cheaper flash. Get a different brand. Do whatever. Get different modifiers. Get a beauty dish. I have a beauty dish. I use it sometimes. Get a Chinese lantern. Get a big reflector. I Whatever. There's all kinds of endless kinds of modifiers, endless kind of things you can do to shape the light depending on your space, 
depending on your subject, depending on the look that you want. That's a whole other subject. But shooting flash with the Q2, I think it's a great camera for that. I think it's great for shooting people and models and subjects, um, especially when you get at a certain distance and uh, using it for flash photography. It just makes it more versatile. I think it's like the best dock camera ever of just carrying it anywhere and shooting anywhere. And I've said that over and over on the channel, but I think it's a pretty damn good studio camera as well. And I've been shooting a lot in legit studios, not just my studio, but I've been shooting a lot in legit and getting some pretty sick results. Let's check this out. This is, uh, shoot this last week. I shot this band, it's a duo, and uh, I used my Q2, this thing, throwing colored blue light on the back white psych, uh, the back of this uh, white psych studio that we're in. And then I used this guy coming in from the side. I, I took some black wrap and to control the light spill and I had a red gel on here. And uh, I was using, I think I had like a half a second or sometimes a full second exposure. And then I had some LED lights up here. So I had three different lights going and was doing long exposures with a flash just experimenting, just trying to learn, trying to do something different. Again, experiment, learn, give yourself permission to fuck up. Uh, find a friend, get a flash, go out, start banging off shots, learn. You're gonna learn way more that way than watching my silly video. So I have made a playlist, which I'm gonna put a link maybe here, maybe down there in the description. There is a playlist of what I think is every video that I've done uh, that featured Q2 and flash photography. There's probably half a dozen, six or eight or 10, I don't know, quite a few. So if you wanna see more of what you saw here, check those out. But hopefully you've seen some images in this video and maybe it's inspired you a little bit and maybe it's shown you if you're a little, a little unsure of where to start or what to do, hopefully Hopefully I've given you a few tips and uh, it helps you on your way. Again, if you have any questions or there's anything I left out or anything I didn't make clear, just leave me a comment. I reply to all the comments. I, I love getting your comments and I will, if I don't know the answer, I'll try and figure it out for you or I'll try and help you. Uh, we're all in this together. We're all just trying to make cool shit and make art and uh, do something we haven't done before, right? So get out there. I think, I think this might be my 100th episode. Wow. Like that's a lot. I don't know. I should look into this. I should have done like a contest or something, but instead I'm just making kind of a half-assed episode about flash photography. Happy 100 YouTube. <laughs> Okay, I think that's all there is. I'm trying, my videos get so long-winded, I'm trying to uh, do shorter videos. I don't think I really achieved that with this one. I think it's still gonna be kind of long, but uh, thanks for watching, folks. I gotta go do some real work now. So we will see you down the road. Take her easy. <laughs>